Hey, what is up, guys? The Strong Boys 19 here. So, it is time for another update video, and I know it has been a long while since my last one, but uh, I had a uh, a great time to spend more of my money on CDs and records, like I usually do, because that is one of my uh, favorite hobbies. So, some of the records I bought from Polar Bear Records, and another pile of records um, I've purchased from a different store called Trax Records. It's mostly um, a gaming selling store with tons of um, games from different consoles, figures, different stuff. And they do have a small section of records, so I bought some records from there too. But let's start off with the CDs first. So the first one is King Crimson with their album Islands. And I gotta say that I really like this album. King Crimson has made, I think, some of the best albums in their discography that are uh, not as successful or as appreciated. And I love this cover. And this album is another one without Greg Lake because he was with Emerson Lake and Palmer at the time. But uh, this is a brilliant album. Took me some time to grow on me, but I really like it a lot. Um, it's got some of their best tracks in my eyes, like uh, Formentor a Lady, Sailor's Tale. Brilliant, underrated album. Let me know what you think of it if you are a fan of King Crimson. Paul Simon, there goes a rhyme in Simon. I haven't played this one yet, and I do have the vinyl pressing of it. That's that's just a, a random uh, little booklet thing. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm wishing Paul Simon the very very best for his final tours later this year, because after that he will be retiring. Which is a shame, because I would have loved to see Paul Simon live. Hence, he is one of my first favourite musicians of all time. But, uh, what a legendary musician. Neil Young, Unplugged. Now, I am very familiar with some of the other live albums from MTV Unplugged. Bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains... And then artists like Bob Dylan to Eric Clapton. But this album is just amazing. This is probably my favourite MTV Unplugged live album. Although Eric Clapton's one is fantastic. Pearl Jam's one is the same. N Nirvana's one is overrated. But I do like that album, but not as strongly as um, others like this one. And I do love the sound of Neil's voice on this album. It's just so mellow and soft. And the, the acoustic vibe was just so wonderful to hear. Anyways, that's that one. Now this album, I was totally blown away by it. The Stooges Funhouse. Why the hell have I not checked out this album? earlier on because this album is the bomb this is some of the most funnest rawest and maddest rock albums that you need to hear and really cool cover art by the way down on the street loose tvi 1970 funhouse and the maddest hell um just a a mind-boggling, just a, a cluster fudge of a track, L.A. Blues. I was trying to think of some other perfect words, but um, L.A. Blues is just insanity. But I love this album. I was very familiar and aware with Iggy Pop. I do appreciate him a lot as a solo artist, but him with the Stooges, he... He pulled it off 
so well with this album. This is his most mentally insane album with the band. So that's that one. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the records I bought from Polar Bear Records. The Stooges, again, same album, Fun House. This is the 2015 double album from Electra Records, one of my most favorite record labels of all time. The first record is the album itself. The second record shows, um, well, includes different takes of some of the tracks. I really like that um, gatefold a lot. Some of the coolest, in my opinion. And there's the band. What an insane rock album. And I now understand why this album was influential. Classic. John Lennon and Yoko Ono, Milk and Honey. I was very happy to have this one because I wanted it for some time. And I believe that this is an original pressing from 1984, Gatefold. John and Yoko there. And one of the songs means so much to me. At least top five favorite Lennon solo track of all time. And that is Nobody Told Me. Love this picture. Nobody Told Me is just one of the best solo tracks from him ever made, in my opinion. I'm sure that I will enjoy this album. But Plastic Ono Band, his first one, um, is his best. My favourite. So I was really happy to have this one. Gotta have some Buddy Holly. So here's his second album. This is uh, a much later pressing. But uh, The Chirping Crickets is my personal favourite. I love the rock and roll era of Buddy's career. But his um, pop-oriented direction with some wonderfully beautiful orchestration is fantastic. But the rock and roll stuff from him is my type of era. But this is a brilliant album with some very nice covers. It has some of his most popular songs. You know, Peggy Sue and Every Day, Words of Love. I love the Beatles um, cover of Words of Love, which was from Beatles for Sale. Beatles for Sale. <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. Sale. Anyway, moving on. John Coltrane, Live at the Village Vanguard again. This is an unofficial pressing on the Jasmine label, which I've never owned a, a pressing through that label before. But this is a really nice live album from Coltrane. I haven't heard his first uh, Village Vanguard live album yet. Well, I was really hooked into John Coltrane's free jazz period at the time. Albums like Interstellar Space and um, the two editions of Ascension. But this is really, really good. I was really thrilled to have this one. Tangerine Dream Logos Live 1982. This is another one of the originals to my Tangerine Dream collection on the Virgin label. But this is worth an experience. My favorite live album from at least one of my top three all time favorite German bands, along with Can and Kraftwerk. Can soon over Babaluma. Love this album. And this is the first album without Demo Suzuki because he left the band. But I gotta say that this is probably Can's best album since Future Days and Tiger Mago. I really like Egibam Yassi a lot. That's near perfection. But I would probably prefer this album more than Egibam Yassi. And er Erman Schmidt, who's that guy right there, is present with the band at the time. And he does some vocal work along with the guitarist, Michael Caroli. And this is the glossy, really beautiful press 
glossy remaster from 2013 on the Spoon Records label. And side two on here is just amazing. From Chain Reaction to Quantum Physics. And I really like Comet Star La Luna. And uh, the other tracks, Dizzy Dizzy, Splash. Beautifully pressed and amazing remaster at that. Love this album cover as, as well. Now on to the records from Tracks Records. So the first one is Roy Orbison, Mystery Girl. His last ever album when he was still around. Awesome album cover. And the song You Got It, which is the single and opening song on here, is my absolute favourite Roy Orbison song. I love that song to pieces, and um, this is on the Virgin label from 1989, and some of the other tracks on here, Roy does some amazing and strong vocal delivery. Tracks like I Love So Beautiful, California Blue, Careless Heart, Windsurfer, just an amazing album. Most of the tracks are produced by Roy and um, another person by the name of, um, if I can find it, uh, Mike Campbell. Others are produced by Jeff Lynn from ELO, Electric Light Orchestra. Uh, but uh, anyways, fantastic album. John Lennon, Yoko Ono and Elephant's Memory, Sometime in New York City. This is the last ever solo album for me to include it to my Lennon collection. And uh, I'm very happy about that because I wanted to complete his solo discography on vinyl for a long, long time. And this is half studio, half live. And that picture is John and Yoko with Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, which is on the live album side of this. Uh, on the studio album side of things, there are tracks on here that I that I do dig and enjoy. Some that I don't care for others, like some of Yoko's stuff. But uh, this has been known as the weakest, or some would say the worst, in his solo career. And I can see why, because it's not one of his best albums. Mind Games is um, better, in my opinion, but... Um, obviously, Plastic Ono Band is, well, as I said, my favourite. Imagine is near perfection, and, and another big favourite of mine called um, Walls and Bridges. But uh, nonetheless, I'm really happy to have this to my Lennon collection, finally. <laughs> now, this, this next record, um, I wouldn't say that I've made a, a mistake, but. Um, I randomly disagree that I that I had owned this album on vinyl. And I just remember that I did show you guys this one uh, from one of my videos. And um, the record was given to me, uh, I think, when I turned 21 on my 21st birthday. And just out of curiosity, I just randomly purchased the same album twice. Genesis The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, one of the most popular and influential double albums of all time. The last album with Peter Gabriel, obviously. But uh, I guess it doesn't really um, bother me that much now to have um, another copy of one of the records I own. Can't go wrong with Genesis with Peter Gabriel. Love. Genesis. Just an amazing band. Deep Purple, Who Do We Think We Are? This is an original first press. This is the follow-up to their popular album Machine Head. And some would say that this is a disappointment, but I actually really like this album. And one of the first Deep Purple songs that I've ever heard of when I was a lot younger, was Woman from Tokyo. Love that song. 
and um, I really like Super Trooper and uh, some of the other tracks. Quite a, a, a very simple piece of album cover art. But yeah, this is, um, I think, I think underrated, but Day Pubble's best album is made in Japan. It's a must-have live record for anyone out there. Bob Dylan with Self-Portrait. Now, some Dylan fans say that this album is either bad or just one of his worst in his career. i got to say that I like this album, okay? I immediately say to myself, there's got to be some chances and merit to this album, and there is. So this album is not bad, okay? Forget what the critics say, but um, I actually do think that there are some nice tracks on this album. Yes, the track listing can be messy because it's uh, a lot of uh, traditional tracks portrayed by Dylan and some covers, um, but there are some nice sounding songs on here. And I like um, his Isle of Wight version of Quinn the Eskimo, the Mighty Quinn on here. And um, I can see why this album does get a bad rap, but I enjoyed this album. So, yeah, it's not one of his best, but at least I am really uh, appreciative en enough to give this album some credit. So, let's leave it at that. <laughs> Robert Fripp, Exposure. This is his first solo album, and this is an original. It is quite an unusual collection of songs that are experimental, but there are some that is straight up, you know, rock, art rock stuff. And um, I really thought that this was going to be um, material, excuse me, to be like um, landscape ambient type stuff, but it isn't. But I, I enjoyed this album. But uh, I need to check out some of his later stuff. Maybe some of them could be better than this. But uh, I do love Robert Fripp, so I decided to pick it up. Bob Dylan again with The Times They Are A-Changing. This is, I believe, the fifth UK pressing from 1964. And I don't know if this record is going to play great because there's some um, some marks and a bit of scratches. But uh, hopefully this this record plays. I'll have to give it a, a, a go. But this is one of my favourite Dylan albums. It has some of his best songs. The times they are changing. On too many mornings. Ballad of Hollis Brown. Really good album. Tangerine Dream once again with Exit. Haven't played this one yet, but uh, I'll see what happens when I play it. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good. Gary Moore, Dirty Fingers. Another one to my Gary Moore collection. This is on the Jet Records label. So my Gary Moore collection is incomplete for now, but uh, i got to give... Uh, one of my favourite guitar players of all time. Um, a lot of support by purchasing his albums. And the last one. This is Edgar Froese's second solo album. Epsilon in Malaysian Pale. This is his second solo album. The, the follow-up to Aqua. Which I really like a lot. But I will probably prefer this album. And this is um, an original from... 1975 on the Virgin label, and the Virgin label is one of my favourite record labels as well. So there you have it. Haunting, very 
smooth, beautiful, electronic, ambient style music. And it is a wonderful listen. So this is definitely the one that I'm very happy to have because I wanted to check it out for some time. So that is uh, Epsilon Immolation Pile. That's all for today. I know that this is a long video, but uh, it definitely is worth it. And I will be back to do more of the usual videos and uh, more album reviews to come and other stuff for you for the channel. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.